Welcome to Megabucks Radio. Conversations with successful entrepreneurs. Sharing their tips and strategies for success. Real world ideas that can put Megabucks in your bank account. Here's your host, Nina Hirschberger. Hello and welcome to the show. Today I am honored to have a longtime friend of mine, uh, Bert Molner. Bert and I go back a long way with marketing, and I you know, there's probably not a more brilliant marketer on the planet than Bert. Uh, Bert is a consultant, and he's the owner of Tree Frog Photography out in the Portland, Oregon area. Um, Bert and I used to live close to each other in the northern Indiana area. Three years ago, he up and moved out of there with no clients, no no business, nothing. So, Bert, tell us three years later now what's happening in your business. Oh, thanks for asking, Nina. Good to catch up. Um, yeah, I turned uh, 50 and decided to semi-retire and fit what I could in my uh, Jeep and drove out to Oregon. I've always loved the state and uh, was going to start living life on my terms. And I uh, just started a photography business up from scratch, uh, not knowing anyone. So it was a commercial photography business. So you don't do weddings and, you know, newborn pictures or anything like that. Correct. I've done plenty of those. Uh, primarily, probably real estate is 75% of it. And then business marketing, uh, another 25% to help uh, businesses get their messaging and, and attract the right kind of clientele. And before we even got on this call, we're, we're doing this in, Oct- in uh, April, right in the middle of the coronavirus um, pandemic. And, and you were telling me you're busier now than you have ever been in the three years being out there. Yeah, I've not done any advertising, any proactive um, outbound marketing at all in the last year and a half. And uh, I am busier than I can keep up with. Okay, so tell us. We all want to know, Bert, what's your secret? How have you done that? Well, it comes back to good old fundamentals, and uh, you anticipate that there's going to be issues in the economy, that there's going to be problems in, you know, government regulations, that, you know, your business, they're going to close down the street in front of you. So you've always got to be planning ahead that, um, you know, sometimes people say that, oh, I had an emergency come up, like with my car, and it, you know, hurt me financially. It's like, oh, really, what was your emergency? Oh, my, you know, tires blew out. It's like, well, that's not an emergency. That's life. You know, those things happen. So we've got to plan ahead for those things. And so, you know, all of us should be looking at our business and saying, you know, what if, you know, the the kind of the likely things happen or things change or the banking changes or customers. So it all kind of comes back to you've got to build good relationships. And when you build good relationships and you help people, and help them solve their problems, you're the first person uh, that they turn to when, when, they, you know, when they don't know what to do or how to uh, solve a problem in their business or okay, in their you know, so let's, uh, home life. So let's talk about photography. What kind of, what makes you different? Because, I mean, you gave me a list. I mean, in fact, tell, tell me the list of the, the places that you have done photography for. So they uh, have a real high-end uh, you know, luxury show they put on out here called the Street of Dreams, and it's a bunch of mansions with all the latest and greatest ooh, uh, you know, wow and tech. And uh, and I got invited to uh, photograph the premier you know model multi-million dollar mansion for that. And uh, the builder told me that I pissed off a lot of photographers. I'm like, gosh, I don't even know any of them. You know how I piss them off? And he said, well, we we've had quite a few of them trying to get the you know, the job and wanting to photograph because this is, you know, good for their portfolio and their resume. And I said, well, I didn't even ask for it. And he said, no, you were referred. And, and he said, because you just get it. You understand the business and you've got, you know, I have an architectural background and been, for, you know, doing photography since uh, eight years old in my dad's dark room. And so just came referred by other folks that, you know, tell him that, gosh, we don't have to explain things to Bert. He understands the key things to focus on. And he's coming in to do um, marketing photography, whereas most photographers come in and do uh, what he called crime scene photography. They just take a picture of whatever's there, uh, whereas I look at the right angles, the right lighting, and move things out of the way and stage it. So it's you know something when you'd open up a magazine that just looks you know very nice and presentable and appealing, and more importantly, emotional. Um, so I focus on a lot of you know what's going to. Um, 
you know, draw out emotions of people and draw a response because we want them to write checks. So that's kind of what our business is focused on. Um, I was also did uh, photography for SEAL Team 2. I've done several jobs for Nike. Um, I did photos for the Women's World Cup Soccer Championship, um, Olympic gold medal champions, uh, HGTV, Food Network, History Channel, and you know, several others, too. So I've been very blessed just from uh, networking and referrals. Yeah, but now, Bert, you've only been out there three years. Three years. Right. With, with no contact. <laughs> So there's got to be some sort of secret, something that somebody can listen to this uh, broadcast and they can learn from. All right. So probably, you know, rule number one is networking. Um, so think about, you know, who in your industry is already gathering your ideal clientele together? Who's already, you know, if you went to a football stadium and, and they gave you the microphone and you said, hey, I'm in the business of selling widgets. Uh, how many of you in the audience here have any interest in, in talking about widgets in the next 18 months? You know, you'd probably get about 2 to 3% of the people in the stadium that want to talk about your product or service um, in the next 18 months. So you could mail out uh, postcards to 100,000 people or you could figure out who are those two or three percent, and then you can afford to do better marketing where they, you know, just they don't have a choice. They want to work with you because you know you've really communicated with them well, and you have budget to find your ideal clientele. Um, so you know, I looked at um, you know broker open houses because I was doing real estate you know brokerages, and and I'd go look up online to see when they were hosting uh, open houses for all the realtors. And I'd go introduce myself and, and uh, ask them if I could send a follow-up price list and, and uh, show them some examples of my work. And, and um, so you know, always, 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 when you leave, you leave owing them something so that you gather their contact information and that you can follow up because you'll never get a sale on the first contact. Um, so kind of that's the you know, rule number one is the networking and figuring out who gathers your ideal client, your tribe, and, and those folks. Okay. Do you have another rule? Yeah. So strategic partnerships. Um, so strategic partnerships are simply, you know, I didn't know anyone out here. And so I needed to figure out, well, who is influential, who knows a lot of people, you know, who's... Uh, uh, and, and quite frankly, it's a lot easier being a stranger and meeting the mayor of the town than if you lived there for 20 years. And when you, you know, ask people for help and say, hey, I'm trying to grow a business and trying to, you know, learn or meet people here, um, you know, is there anyone you could introduce me to? You know, most of the time, if you ask somebody for help, you know, nine times out of 10, they're going to try and help you if they can. I mean, people feel good about helping others. So rather than coming in and pitching them on a sale or what I want to sell them, um, you know, oftentimes I'll just compliment them that, boy, you're, you know, I keep hearing your name and you're the go-to person. And, and that sounds like, um, you know, you're the one I need to chat to, uh, with on, on how to grow my business and, and introduce and how to help people that, you know, need my services. And uh, so, you know, if I were a realtor, for instance, I'd be thinking, you know, uh, who does a homeowner contact before they would ever call a realtor when they're starting to think about selling their home? You know, an obvious one is going to be their banker, their mortgage person. Uh, but a less obvious one is going to be the carpet cleaner, uh, the home handyman, um, a window replacement company, a painter, um, a garage door repair company. Um, those are all folks who are going to get that uh, information that somebody's interested in selling their house before they're ever going to call a realtor. So if you can form a strategic partnership with those folks, because, you know, if, if you're a realtor, for instance, you need those kind of services for your clients. So you're able to help them and have referrals. And in the same sense, you want them to give you a heads up um, and make them look good. Um, you know, when they find out that someone's replacing their windows because they're getting ready to sell or someone's, you know, uh, you know, getting their carpets clean because they're getting ready to sell the house. So, um, so networking, so you went out and you, you met with a lot of people, you went to the broker open right. houses, you created those right. strategic partnerships. So you did stuff. So a, a normal photographer would just say, well, I hope they call me. I've got a website. I got my business cards and now I'm going to use the hope method. And you said, no, <laughs> that doesn't work. Right. So, uh, you know, again, if you help other people, 
and don't expect a, a return, um, that comes back to you. So, you know, if I found out that a realtor was trying to attract new client, basically anyone in sales is always trying to find ways to attract new clients. So how can I help them? Well, one way is I could offer uh, free headshots to all the other um, you know, realtors in town that were coming to their open house and give them a professional headshot and, hey, I'm meeting people who need my services. I'm helping my uh, realtor, my client out, who's trying to attract and, and get a bunch of other realtors to the house they're responsible for listing and they need, you know, a lot of realtors to come look at it. Um, so it's that strategic partnership. You know, how can I help them? How can they help me? Um, you know, who else? Um, is going to know about people who need photography or, you know, businesses. So, um, so, you know, I always stop into businesses as well. So when a, a dentist opens up a new office, you know, I stop in and congratulate them or send them a card. Um, you know, Hey, it looks like you have a beautiful building. Congratulations. And Oh, by the way, I do photography. If you need to uh, get some professional, um, you know, look and feel out there to share the news. Um, so I stop okay, so- um, oh, go ahead. Let, let, let's kind of maybe transition because I really want these to even be ideas because you're so smart. Ideas for maybe local businesses. Let's pretend you own a restaurant. I mean, any ideas how you can take what you've done to grow your photography business and be as busy now as ever and for a restaurant who might be struggling or a dentist who might be struggling or a chiropractor? You know, we all think in pictures. So imagery is is probably the most important uh, part of your marketing and, and um, you know strategizing. So um, you know if you're doing a, well like on a house listing, I mean you have pages and pages of de- details: three bedroom, two baths, such and such school district, and you know yada yada. Um, but when we research and study, I mean you've got to know your business, you've got to research the stuff. Uh, what I came to find out is that they only read 26% of the information that's written. So a realtor is just wasting their time writing all these beautiful descriptions when it's really the pictures that people look at. So because people think in pictures, you know, nine, if I tell you to think of a, uh, an elephant, you know, you're not thinking of the letters E-L-E, you know, you know you're thinking of a gray mastodon. Um, so that's just how our brain functions. Our, our eyeballs and our brain are wired to process and intake images. Um, so you want to uh, you want to set that image because the first impression of a business or a person is formed in well less than one second. And so that very first impression is extremely important. So the first thing you've got to do is step back from your business, your restaurant, or whatever type of business you have, and get some friends who aren't maybe so close to it. And just take a look at, you know, what's the first impression of your business? How does it feel? How's the approach coming to it? Do you have you gathered lots of old stuff uh, over the years that just isn't modern and updated? Um, you know, how's the greeting and the reception? Is it warm and inviting, or do you have signs on your door that say "Don't do this, don't do that"? And you know, you got uh, you know, all the negativity before you even step in the door. Um, okay. So, so the next thing. I, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. So if I owned a restaurant, for instance, um, the next thing is now let's talk about relationships. So people like that personal touch. People like, um, you know, recognition. People like exclusivity. So I've done a lot of private closed-door events. And as you know, Nina, I like to cook. So I would host um, guest chef events and close down the restaurant. And the owner would let me take over his restaurant and bring in my clients for an appreciation meal. Um, I had people that were... um, couldn't get in because it was sold out and they wanted to be on a waiting list. Sometimes I'd have, you know, 30 to 70 people on a waiting list that, Hey, if you get any cancellations, you let me know. So the reason why that was uh, so sought after is because I built value into it to begin with. Um, So I sent them, I always call it T for two. So don't ever invite just one person, invite them in their best favorite lunch companion. Invite them in their favorite, you know, movie companion. Invite them in their favorite, you know, dinner companion, or you know, so on. So I always sent out, um, you know, if my client were a couple, I always sent out another set of tickets, and I put the value of what they were getting. So I always made it something that was unusual that you can't get anywhere else except coming through Bert. 
Um, so I always had unusual menu items like ostrich or elk, um, you know, steaks and things like that, or a seven course all dark chocolate, um, you know, dinner with a dessert that's a double delirium, you know, dark chocolate cheesecake. And, and, uh, and so on there, I would send the four tickets with the note that says, if you're unable to use these or attend, please send them, please uh, send these valuable tickets back so that we can make sure they don't go to waste. Well, at that point, nobody's going to send them back. That you know, I got calls and said, "Well, I can't make it. We're out of town." But would you mind if I gave them to my, um, you know, my business partner? No, absolutely not. You know, so people saw value in it uh, to to begin with. So, figure out how in your business can you create that value and that exclusivity that people don't want to miss out on, and then use your strategic so partnerships, um, you know, to bring in those opportunities. So let's talk about right now. So obviously, Bert, well, you can't do um, a private um, gathering and stuff. You can't do that right in this period of time. And so restaurants in our area, you know, they're doing the drive up and, you know, carry out and all of that kind of stuff. How can they set themselves apart? How can they be different? How can they be the one where everybody's talking about, everybody's going to? That's a great question. Um, the best way to do that is to um, uh, people like things done for them. So if you can already do the thinking and you can already prepackage, and if you can do things in a manner that makes it easy on you in the business and makes it easy on you to be more profitable because you have less waste, you know, pre-plan some meals. Hey, you know, everybody knows that Tuesday is taco night. So if you have tacos on your menu, you put together a package of tacos for a family. So you do a package of, you know, family of two, family of four, and so on, and do some kind of package. Never discount. Uh, discount is just a race to the bottom. Always add extra value that you get. Um, you know, if you order today, you get something extra. You get something additional uh, with it that they normally wouldn't get. And then you have that convenience of saying, hey, don't forget Taco Tuesdays. To met, uh, you know, tomorrow we have dinner all prepared for you. Uh, just call us with your credit card, and uh, we drop it off at your door with a knock and all, uh, you know, hands-free. Um, you know, if, if we're still in a situation where, you know, we can't socialize and things like that. Um, or, you know, come in and pick it up and you're ready. Um, another thing to look at is, you know, we can have a make it at home option. You know, we've got all the ingredients put together from your favorite restaurant and, and Mama Sita's, you know, recipe from, you know, that she brought back from the old country in Italy and, and with our, our local, you know, authentication. Um, so, you know, always make it about helping the small guy and that you're local and, and that we're personal and that we care about you. Well, I mean, I can go back to the strategic partnership you talked about. So let's say, let's say it's you. Let's say it's a photographer and you really made these, these partnerships. You've got your list of, of realtors and stuff. Let's say I was a pizza place. I could say, Bert, can we joint venture? Can we partner? Can, would you, you know, tell your people about it? that I'm having Taco Tuesday or, or pizza night or whatever. Is that a good strategy? Yeah, absolutely. You know, another thought is that, you know, the owner of the restaurant or a chef, something like that, prepackage. And one of them I did was um, I found out that the doctors no longer got to have the nice dinners out with their spouses from the pharmaceutical companies. New laws, new rules, so they could no longer you know, buy their business as the government called it. So the, the wives no longer got to go out to these fancy, nice dinners. So I held an event at a private home theater company and I brought in a chef to teach seven ways of how to cook shrimp. So now, you know, and it was all for doctors. So, it was, you know, private, it was exclusive. Nobody else could get in. And so now we're teaching the wives, not only, you know, we're giving them some great shrimp and they get a night out with the doctors, you know, doctor's event that they missed, they haven't had in a year. Uh, but now we're also teaching them how to do that. And we're sending them home with the recipes with all my business logos and my business contact on it that every time they pull out the recipe, oh, yeah, that's right, man, we had a great time at, you know, Burke's event. So a restaurant owner can have these uh, cook at home meals all ready to go if you can't have it ready in the restaurant. And we're going to do an online cooking course at six o'clock Tuesday night, how to make authentic tacos and have everything in it in the package and have already delivered the, you know, early in the morning or that day. So that tonight at six o'clock and it's, you know, and we'll record it. So if you need to watch it tomorrow, you can do that. And we can just teach them how we do it in the restaurant and how mama taught us. Oh, that's a and cool now you're idea. Interactive. Yeah, you're interactive, you're personal, you know, 
uh, someone's teaching them how to make great food that they don't know how to, and you know, so on. And it's fun, something different, something interesting, because people are yeah, home. you're learning. Huh? It's, it's local. You're building relationships with the owner. So, you know, now when you come in, you can wave at the owner, and, yeah, he taught me how to, you know, how to cook, and, and so on. Now, do you think it's a good idea? So let's say, what about a chiropractor? I mean, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot, I know, but what about something sure. like that? So my messaging for chiropractor would be that um, uh, today, really where the money is at is all in preventative health. So my messaging would be all about, you know, peak performance and preventative health and, and being, you know, stuck at home. You're not out exercising like you used to. You're not getting fresh air. So it's even more important for chiropractic care. And so since you can't come into the office, um, again, I'm going to teach an exercise class that every morning at 6.30 a.m., uh, wake up with uh, <laughs> Julie, and we're going to teach you some um, preventative measures that will get you through your day, especially since you're going to be doing a lot more sitting these days um, until we can get back to normal and get you back in and get you the full tune-up. Interesting. Okay. Let's let's turn the corner a little bit because before we got on this call, you and I talked about because you're so good with this with your photography business, you are now having your clients that you're doing photography work say to you, Burke, can you help us out with some of our marketing? So what are you what are you doing with them these days? Yep, excellent. Um, so again, it it really is all about telling your story. Um, I enjoy when I go into a restaurant and you open up the menu and I've never been there before or I'm in a new town and it tells me the, the story about how they started the restaurant and what they're all about and why they do the kind of food they do and, the, and maybe even the hurdles or, uh, you know, those kind of things. And I get to know their story um, and it's kind of like wine too. I mean, people get so fussy about wine and the type of wine and the taste and the flavors and the smell and, and you know, they get all uptight about it, but at the end of the day, it's just grape juice in a bottle. So what really matters is the stories and the people you were with when you had it. So in any kind of business, uh, just absolutely, you've got to make sure that those stories and the people that you were with get shared with the kind of clientele that you want to attract. And you also want to kind of use those stories to repel the kind of clientele that, that are not profitable and that are a pain in the butt to work with and that you're in the kind of jobs you really don't want to do. Now, that's not to say that if someone comes to you and needs help that you shouldn't help them. Uh, but what I'm saying is, you know, figure out and look at your business. Uh, who's the kind of clientele that's ideal for you? You know, where your skill sets match up with their needs where the type of work you want to do is the most profitable kind of work you can do and try and figure out in your business, what is it that other folks that do my type of business cannot do? Because let me tell you, everybody's a photographer, right? Everybody's got their new fandangled cell phones and every realtor is trying to do it themselves. Why hire a photographer and pay, you know, hundreds or thousands of dollars when I can just do it myself? Um, so you've got to figure that story out about, you know, what makes you different and unique. So, you know, you've got to have decent quality work, um, but quality is not enough. You've got to um, then figure out uh, what makes yours more valuable, even if it's at the same price as everyone else's or if everyone else is cheaper. Um, you know, why would they want yours? So what's that trust factor, that reliability, the extra service, and really Anything you can do for personal service and custom service and relationship building. Um, you know, if I had a dry cleaner business or if my dry cleaner moved across town and to get to them, like in Portland here, to go across town seven miles is anywhere from 22 minutes to you know three hours and 60 minutes, depending on the time of day. So what would make me as a customer drive that horrible drive and go past 10 other dry cleaners? Um, who may be at a cheaper price to go to my guy, you know, the one who knows me, who takes care of my things, who I can trust with my expensive garments and who will, if he sees something, will just take care of it. Or if she sees a loose button or a, a stain that I didn't ask about, you know, just handles it. Um, so again, it's, it's the personalization and the stories. Um, capture that story. So what kind of story have you done for your photography that did set you apart so much? 
Uh, primary thing is I, I created a visual catalog. Um, it's a 24 page visual because I'm in photography. I should have good visuals. And I uh, created it as not only a paper copy, you know, nice magazine quality, but I also created it as a digital flip book on my email so they can flip through. And, you know, really at the end of the day, Nina, it is just a long form sales letter. You know, here's all the things you need to look for in quality photography. Here's why you don't want to do it yourself. Here's all the problems you can run into. Uh, there's this French term called contre jour, which is against the light, and it's the hardest thing to photograph is in a, uh, you know, four walls with a little hole poked in the sun with the, uh, in the, in the wall with the sun shining through. It's just hard to get a good photograph like that. Um, so that's why you need the experts and that's why you need, you know, higher and more professional equipment. So I'm just kind of telling them all the reasons of why, um, you know, if they try and do it themselves, not only are they going to lose customers, they won't get referrals. Um, so you need high-end professional photography to get your uh, referrals, to sell at the higher prices, and to sell quicker. And then I need to back it up with statistics and research and brain science. So your clients out there have seen your work, see that, that photo book, seen all of that stuff, and you are now even doing marketing consulting for people you've been done photography worth. Tell me, tell me what's happening that way. Yeah. So one of my clients, um, did some uh, photography for her. She owned a, a business and she was trying to grow the real estate firm and hire realtors. And I started doing her photography and, and then started doing exclusively all of her work. And she went from being 763 in the, um, in the town for rankings to now she's number 27 and that's in a year and a half. And she, you know, she tells me, Bert, it all comes down to the marketing and the image uh, because of, you know, because I can trust you to just go do your thing um, and you make me look good. And that's brought me more referrals. And, you know, you're not an expense to me like other photographers were in the past. Uh, you're actually a profit center to me. Because you're looking at the, the idea of, of marketing that thing. And so you take the pictures from a marketing idea, from a marketing eye is what you're saying. Yes, as opposed to crime scene photos of just coming in and snapping in the doorway or, um, you know, just trying to record the room. I'm trying to you know, make it where someone can imagine themselves sitting there and enjoying a glass of wine and looking out over the view and say, wow, this is the place I want to be. So I really make um, the whole presentation is all about the lifestyle, not about the studs and the shingles and the square foot price. Interesting. Well, is there any any stories of, of businesses that you're seeing that are real, doing really creative things right now in this pandemic? Um, you know, so I, I stopped in an automotive um, repair shop, and uh, they were uh, putting in new air conditioning, you know, Freon stuff for me. And, and they said, so, you know, how's your business been in this, you know, shutdown or pandemic stuff? And they said, oh, we're, we're way down. And so I'm kind of asking you, well, you know, things are going to be different going forward. I mean, we are not going to do business like we have, um, you know, like we have the last past couple of years. Our, our business going forward, we're going to be in a very new economy, and we're going to be in a very different type of business atmosphere. So, you know, for my real estate clients, for instance, that means that they need more video walkthroughs and more virtual types of things and 3D floor plans as opposed to just pictures. Um in an auto auto repair shop, I said, so, you know, what are, what are you going to be doing different in the future? Um, you know, to where, you know, hey, this thing's going to last a few months to deal with, but then, you know, when we get out of it, things are going to be different as well. So what are you changing in your business? And he's like, well, I spent a lot of time thinking about that and, and, you know, we're trying to come up with those solutions and the answers. I'm like, well, that's actually what I do. I, I do business marketing. And so I help tell that story. So now is a really good time to look at your business and, and really think about what is the most profitable part of my business? Um, what are the things that we'd like to do more of? So if you're an automotive repair, you know, body shop, do you want to do more fleet sales? Uh, do you want to do more high end work? Um, you know, what is it that's you know, profitable for you and that you're good at and that others maybe can't do so well? Um, and then who are the kinds of clients again, that you want to repel that, that, are not profitable and that are kind of a nuisance and a pain in the butt to work with. Um, so we need messaging that isn't attractive to them. Um, and then also, uh, again, just uh, how do you communicate? So uh, back uh, when you and I lived in Indiana, uh, there was a local school district 
And uh, now they were just got some new awards that they were ranked number one in several states for that school district. And I ran into that superintendent a few months uh, later, and I was able to catch him for coffee and, and said, hey, I just wanted to congratulate you. And I saw the news and, man, that's fantastic. I'm so happy for you and the kids and the teachers. And, and I said, okay, so you got to tell me, what's your secret? How do you, how do you outrank all these other schools to become number one in the area? And, and yet a lot of things working against you. I mean, you're small, you're out in the country, and, you know, all that kind of thing. <laughs> he almost kind of. Uh, laughed like a big Santa Claus laugh. And he's like, he said, I, I wish I could tell you there's a secret. He said, um, all these other schools around us, I know them. I know their superintendents. I know their teachers. I know a lot of the parents. And they have really good teachers. They have award-winning you know, students. They have you know, all the things that we have. So the difference is we hired a publicist. And our publicist just did a better job of telling the story when a student won an award. When a teacher did some breakthrough, you know, new you know, studies or research or experiment, um, you know, when our attendance for our, our uh, you know, parent conferences is higher than it used to be, you know, we just share all that good news. And that gives our community a lot of confidence. And then they start bragging about it because they want their kids to go to the best schools. The teachers want to teach at the best schools. And so, you know, kind of that fake it till you make it. He said, you got to tell people. Um, and you've got to communicate. You've, you know, don't don't be ashamed to tell people that you're good, and be able to share what you're good at. And you know, even if you're not good at it, you know, let them know those things too. That they were really good at at this stuff, but you know, not so much at that. Um, and again, not that you should always share negativity, um, but um, you know, be very good. You know, it's hard for people. It's hard for each of us. You know, like. Um, I know all of us just don't want to brag about ourselves. It just doesn't feel comfortable and, and, you know, we hate, you know, tooting our own horn. So if you can find a way for a third party to say things about you or to endorse you, well, that's very believable. You know, if I say it about myself, well, now I'm just, you know, now I'm doing a sales pitch. Um, so write press releases, you know, ask if a client has given you some kind words, ask them if you can share that and, uh, and use those kind of things. So referrals, um, absolutely capture that and share that. So just be good at telling people why they should trust you over other choices that they have. Wow. Well, you said a lot there. So if I, if I could just kind of summarize, I think that's a big, big takeaway. So I don't matter if you're a dentist or a restaurant or a chiropractor or an auto repair or a, a tutor or whomever it is, it might be worth knowing all of your local media, getting a list if you're local business, uh, and also then and sending out press releases, letting them know what's happening, um, and also then doing it on a nationwide basis. It reminds me of a story. I, I met a um, guy who has a construction company out of Rhode Island. And for about a year, this guy went on, and, and he, it was a high-end construction company. He only did a couple things. One was very high-end uh, kitchen makeovers. We're talking an eighty-five dollars to $100,000 kitchen, high-end, and roofs. I don't know why roofs, but those were the two things that he specialized in. So what he did for a whole year is he went on the road and he was on television after television after television after, I mean, and we're talking in Los Angeles and, I, you know, Dallas, he's in Rhode Island. Why in the world would he do that? And what he told me is he became the celebrity because, of course, he took all of that media and linked it onto his website. So it was overwhelming proof of, of who he was and, you know, what he did. He said, so I knew I wasn't going to get any business by going to L.A., but I knew it was, it was creating that celebrity status for me. You, when, we, when I said, tell me about who you've done business with, I mean, you told about this company and, you know, the Olympic team and this, I mean, those are really important kind of status and celebrity kind of things. Yeah, definitely have been very blessed. And I'll tell you another, as you mentioned that, um, I wrote a book. And so when I come in, you know, I'm the expert in photography. I wrote the book on 
marketing photography. And so when I'm able to hand them that, you know, that gives me some perceived, you know, status that, oh, you know, if I'm talking to two or three other people, this is the guy who wrote the book on that subject. So each of you that are listening, you have expertise in what you're doing. And expertise just simply means that you know a little bit more than the average common person. And so find a way to communicate, share that expertise. If it's writing a book, if it's writing a blog, if it's doing you know a little once a month, a uh, little short article for a newsletter, or just a social media update that you know the Thursday mornings are you know meet the expert and you just give your tips. So you and I both have written books. I'm glad you brought the book up because. It's not that difficult these days to write a book, but you get them printed, don't you, Bert? It's not an e-book. It's a physical book. Oh, absolutely book. not. Yeah. yeah, newsletters and books should always be in print. Well, it costs too much, Bert. Are you kidding? I mean, really? I mean, <laughs> that, that's, that's the objection, you know, that why, well, or I don't know what to say, or I can't do this. There's always a, I can't, or I'm too busy, or, or whatever. Do you so mine is a cost of my, yeah, the cost of my colleagues were telling me that they were spending on things like personalized nice pens. I was spending on a book that had my name telling my biography and telling people that I'm the expert for the same price as a Google giveaway, you know, pen, um, you know, for a couple bucks. Um, or I had, uh, you know, metal engraved business cards um, that looked like a gold ingot when I was a financial advisor. And, uh, and it was my referral card. You only get one of those, and I'm only taking referrals. I'm um, only taking on new business by referral only with my top clients. So I'm only giving out a few of these. Um, so, again, that exclusivity, you know, that you're harder to get to, um, that you're selective on who you take in, then let your customers, you know, sell you on why you should accept them. Yeah, no, that's that's brilliant. That's why I always like being around you. You always have such amazing ideas. Um, and, and you don't just talk about them. <laughs> you do them. I mean, you know, three years ago, you go out there, you have no no clients, no income, nothing. You had to build it from scratch, and you become the premier one. And you're right. Everybody has the cell phone these days. Everybody's a photographer. And uh, And look what you've done. So... Congratulations. Well, I am I am looking at the time. Uh, we're just about out of it. Is there anything else that you think about? Any other um, businesses out there that you're seeing that are doing some really, you know, creative, interesting things? You want to wrap this up with? Um, you know, again, the ones that I've seen are just the personal service that we have it all done for you. Um, you know, probably the biggest component of starting out or trying to make a change or trying to, you know, grow and attract new clientele, especially when there's hiccups or slowdowns, um, you know, you, you've got to have a marketing calendar. So you've got to already have things that you're consistently doing because what happens is when you get busy with sales or other projects, you're not filling your pipeline. And then all of a sudden when, you know, the, the you know, checks quit and the profit's all done. You've been so busy from helping a lot of business. And all of a sudden, you're out of work and you got to spend the next three months trying to attract, you know, new business. So you've got to consistently have a marketing calendar uh, that where you're consistently communicating with people, you know, through a printed newsletter, through your social medias, through phone calls, through, you know, mailings, um, going out meeting in person. So the marketing calendar is extremely important. And the second aspect of that is you've got to be educating um, your ideal clientele on why they need your service and why you add the most value out of anything, including doing nothing. Yeah, no. So your marketing calendar, is it is it a physical calendar that you actually write or type on and, and you have posted in your office someplace? Yes. Yeah, so I know I have it electronic. So I know that um, you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays are my social media messages, and, and one is educational and one is fun. Um, what I've kind of found is very much like newsletters. Um, you know, if you're a dentist, people don't want to hear constantly about, the, you know, why you need a filling or why uh, your fillings are you know, on special this month. 
So your newsletter and your, your social media marketing, especially, it's a social platform. So be talking about your staff that, uh, you know, one of your staff just got a new puppy for their kid, that they won an award, that, that the doctor just came back from new training, that you just got a new high-tech equipment that's cutting edge. Um, so you want to be very much educational and fun. You know, you want to be kind of the, the interesting, fun outlet to go to and then also um, you know, where you then become the authority. So only talk about your business things um, on that type of platform, you know, newsletters and, and uh, social media and that. Uh, I recommend don't talk about business except for about 15% of the time. And all the rest should be educational, informative, you know, fun. Um, you know, and it can be related to the type of business you're in, but it doesn't have to be. Hmm. Wonderful, wonderful advice. Well, Bert, thank you so much for taking. I know you're you're about ready to go out what some thousand acre or something tomorrow and do some fun yes, stuff. Yes. Yeah, looking forward to it. Gonna get up and do my social distancing and getting up in the mountains and out in the wilderness for a few days. That's awesome. So thank you so much for, for being part of this and giving your wisdom. It's amazing. So until next time, remember, strategic partnerships, networking, helping others, and stopping in and congratulating businesses and all sorts of ideas. Now is the time. Thank you for listening to Megabucks Radio with Nina Hirschberger. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or to listen to past episodes, visit megabucksradio.com.